Today on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage, we're gonna show you how to chew on some tires. Yay! No, no, Danny, you got it all wrong. I got that wrong? So then what are we gonna do today? We're not gonna be chewing model car tires. Today, we're gonna be perfecting and painting our model car tires. Okay, let's go in. It's getting pretty cold out here. Let's go on in and I'll show you how this is done. So now that we've come inside from the cold and are now down in our chilly little basement here, it's not so bad if you wear sweaters and whatnot. Anyway, before we begin our video, I want to share with you this cool card I got in the mail. I got this a while ago and I was going to try to put it in my videos, but I couldn't really figure out how to until this moment. My moment of inspiration. This card comes from Rick Zink. And on the back it says, Hi Trevor, I enjoy your model car reviews. Please keep up the great work. I have a YouTube channel about model cars and the model car hobby. Please check it out. The channel name is Rick Zink. Best wishes, Rick. So what I'll do is I will leave the link down below in the descriptions of this video so you can check out Rick's, Rick, Rick's site as well. Must be the cold weather. It's freezing my nose. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying outside in the cold to Danny the dog, we're not going to show you how to chew your model car tires. We're in fact today going to show you how to perfect them out to make them balanced and look like real tires, as well as paint on the nice white walls and everything else. So without further ado, let's go down to our workbench and I'll show you how to do that. I can't wait. For this project, we need a cordless drill or even a drill press. I've got a roll of sandpaper here, a block of MDF. Here's a uh, socket that I'm using to put in the centers of these tires over here. I've got these scissors as well because we're going to need to cut the um, sandpaper and put it on the block. I have a hobby knife for removing any webs or anything else from the wheels. And these Zergon cutters right here. Now let's begin by setting up the block. So here we have our MDF. And this sandpaper comes in a big roll. I got it from a auto body uh, collision repair shop. It's 180 grit sandpaper. This is designed for a circular sander. And you just rip it off there. Put your sandpaper roll to the side. Choose a good side of the block, which I think is this side. Then I'm gonna put it on here like this. And cut along here with my scissors. it comes off there. It's uh, sticky on the back, of course, so it'll stick onto the MDF. And I just cut it like that. 180 grit sandpaper is pretty good for uh, doing these tires. You don't really want to use it too much on your plastic because it is a very coarse grade. Uh, the better one to use, of course, is 320 for starting on plastic. But as you can see, we have our uh, MDF board ready to go to sand down the tires. Here I have the four Goodyear Polyglass GT tires, our Zuron cutters, and an Excel knife here with a number 11 blade. This is a brand new blade. Now, these tires have a web on the one side, as you can see, and then there is a really raw mold mark along here, along the tread, and then in here there's a little bit of flash that's sticking up on each of these four tires. So what we can do is take our cutters and go inside the wheel here, and just carefully cut those runners from the rubber web. And one more here. And now, well, 
while the web is free, I'll take our hobby blade. You want to just poke it in there. Carefully go around. Try not to cut the uh, the side wall of the tire here. Just encourage the web to come out a little bit. And there it is. Now you can see it's a little bit chunky around where those uh, connectors are. So you just want to take your hobby blade. Remember it's sharp, so be careful. And carefully work the web out. And then uh, once you get that done, just go around here a little bit. Just try to catch that nicely. And you're trying to remove the uh, little bit of flash in here. We're doing this so it will mount on the rim nicely, as well as on our spinning tool. So what I'll do is I'll carry on this with the four tires, and I'll show you what it looks like. So something I want to show you, if you go around and you cut the web out, right? I pre-cut this one. But you look at the back of the web, you'll see these big thick rubber posts that are sticking out all around here, right? So on the inside of the tire, you can actually, I don't know if, yeah, you can see if I squish it a little bit, maybe not, but there's the uh, tops of those um, little runners that are sitting in there. So one way to get them out is to take your number 11 hobby blade and just turn it. There, see? So you can see the uh, blade and just cut it flat in one direction and then come back the other way. And you should be able to flatten out those bumps inside the tire and make it flat on both sides. That'll also help with your fit of your rims and your wheel retainers once you uh, get this all done and start putting your wheels in there. Next up we're going to begin the sanding process on our Goodyear Polyglass GT tires. These are older AMT tires, that's why they have the web. I'm not too sure if round two solved that problem or if they're made the same way, but it doesn't really matter. So anyway, here I've got a 7 16 socket. This has the end to fit in your screwdriver and then of course our sanding block. So what we will do is we'll just choose one of these tires and we'll push our whoops we'll push our um, socket through and as you can see it's got a nice tight fit on there even though these are hollow tires. I'm just going to push the tire down so that it is seated in the socket nice and even. And then what we'll do is, we have to do this for each of the tires, including the other tires that I got, the two sets of Firestones, Firestone and Firestone Supreme tires. And we're going to take this now and we're going to put it in the chuck of our drill. So here we have the chuck of our drill, and the uh, Black & Decker electric is pretty easy. You just move this around. Now if you're a kid here watching this video, make sure you have your parents supervision and permission to use a drill like this. Where is it? So we just turn it there and then to lock on mine, well it doesn't really lock but you know to put some tension in there you just this way on there on your chuck. Now the uh, Black & Decker it's got a little button here this one has an arrow going this way which means if you were to push this in and press this your drill's going in reverse, so you want it with the arrow forward on the other side. Push that in. So now our tire is spinning forwards. So then I'm going to take the sanding block, and where I can see it, I'm going to um, turn on the drill, and the idea is to get rid of this seam line around the edge of our tire. And uh, Actually, I would hold it this way, normally, but we want to see what's going on. So I'm just keeping, whoops, keeping the block flat, 
This may happen that your tire pops off because it's a smooth surface here. Okay, keeping the block flat, I'm moving it a little bit back and forth. Just to cut, just to cut the edge of that tire down. Oops, and there we go. Now that ridge is gone, and you do get a um, street-ridden tire look here on the tread. And as you can see, there is a lot of the rubber that uh, shaved off onto our sandpaper here. So we can take the tire off now. Let's move the drill out of the way, just so you can see this a bit better. You'll notice that it's not as shiny black on this side now. Uh, you can wash the tire with some soap and water afterwards, and you'll see that it'll come up a little bit better. Or you could always just, you know, leave this. Well, you want to wash it because it's full of uh, sanding dust. So, just to make it nice. So again, the process is very simple. Actually, you can feel which side gives you a little more tension on here. I think that's okay. If you turn it, it might be a little bit looser on one end. So I kind of like it this way. Again, you can always just put your block there flat to the socket and push your tire up against it. Looks like it's got a little wobble in there. Okay. Oops. If your tire pops off, of course, just push it back down. Yeah, you can feel it this way. It's nice and smooth. So again, that's just basically all you're doing. It's just spinning the tire in the drill press, holding the sandpaper up to it, and removing, or basically shaving down the tread there so it's nice and smooth. So here's what our tires look like after they've all been sanded on their tread. And as you can see, they look a lot more realistic now. Wow, those model car tires are really looking delicious now. And uh, one more thing I'm going to try to do, you don't have to really do this on all your tires, but I'm going to try to paint the Goodyear lettering and the Polyglass GT lettering using some white acrylic paint. So let's see how that's done. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, hey honey, I just came back from the hobby shop. You wouldn't believe what they had. They had this van here that's just exactly the same as how my dad's van was, but it's a Coca-Cola one and I want to build it and man, I can't wait to see what this looks like. And then you went downstairs to your workbench. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh man, this is the worst thing I ever got. Or maybe it went like this. Oh man, this is the best model kit I ever could have got. If you're looking for great model car unboxing review videos, don't forget to subscribe to us over at the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage, found on YouTube, and I'll leave the link in the description below. Back in July 2013, High River experienced a massive flood. Although many things were damaged and destroyed in the High River flood, we were able to save some of our products. Wait until you see what I have inside the Studebaker. In this video, we will restore one of them as best we can. I'm just going to open up the door here. These all got hit in the High River flood. And I managed to rescue as many as I could. Oh wow, is this car ever dirty? Now there's only one solution to fixing those car wheels, and that of course is... Repaint. Well, that car looks so much better now. Here's what I need to paint the uh, white letters on our tires with. I've got a 5 over 0 brush here. I've got our tires, of course a little bowl with water, and our paint mixing palette plate, along with a bottle of Citadel White Scar, 
and this paint is an acrylic so that means that of course it's water base so I can just open this up I'm gonna put this on our mixing thing over here now the water this paint can be kind of thick which might be okay for the lettering actually usually I'd prime the brush in the water and then mix a little thing on there but I'll see if I can do this so you just want to carefully hit the tops of the letters with your paintbrush this is coming up really nice considering how far away I am from the everything to try to paint this so there you can see that I've got year on the tire and then we'll just paint our winged emblem here and the good part you want the good part oops I hit the tire but that's okay for now I just go this way with the brush making sure that I get that everywhere the white paint and then this might be a little more tricky Let's see if I can get this huh I got it polyglass GT it's a little dash there l60 15. Oops, I'm making a mess again. Now, we made a little mess on the tire there, but you can see how nice this is coming. So let's just take a look at how to correct that. So here we have our tire, and now I've got our number 11 hobby blade. And what I'll do is figure out where I made the mistake, take the hobby blade, and carefully chip the paint off if I can if not the other way to do it is just to paint over it with a little bit of black paint okay there but usually this works So there we go, Goodyear Polyglass GT L6015. A little more definition in there. Oh, oops. Okay, so there's our tire now. And how does that look compared to the original? Pretty decent, hey? So that's just using our Goodyear Polyglass GTs. So how would it look with our Firestone Supremes and our regular vintage Firestone tires. Well, we'll have to get out a drill press again. Sorry, our electric drill. And then clean these up We're using the electric drill. So here we have our vintage Firestone tires, and these are the ones that just say Firestone inside. And they were included in all the old model car kits, basically from the 1932 Ford. And these ones, they have a little bit of a I don't know if you can see it too well, but there's a little bit of a button in here. So you just take your hobby blade and run it on the inside. Just to get rid of that, that's where it was on a parts tree. And usually around here on this back ring, there's always a bit of flash sticking up. So a good way to, to uh, get rid of it, of course, is take your hobby blade and just sort of go around this edge whoops nice and flat 
just, you need to catch this thing. Where is it? <laughs> there we go. No, wait, you don't want to cut toward yourself. So there. You just want to hold that blade pretty much a little bit of an, an angle this way. See? But on the flat. So you're not trying to dig it in this way. But just keep it kind of flat and roll your tire around. You'll see it starts to come off nicely. So anyway, there it is. Now remember though, there is a bit of a ridge around there where this is. So that's why I have it on the flat, because you don't really want to remove that ridge. And you want to be careful not to dig into your sidewall either. Okay, so I will do that for the four tires, and then we can mount it on our spinner. Now that we have the insides of those wheels all cleaned up, it's time again to put them onto our spinner. So these ones are harder plastic, vinyl. Um, so they will stay on there nice. You just turn the drill slowly. Yeah, I got a bit of a walk on there. So I will just push this up against the pad here. That looks better. So again, holding your sanding block. Keeping it flat and moving it back and forth. Whoa, and I rounded off the tread right there. So you can see that these tires are not exactly perfectly centered. But anyway, you saw it here, folks. Turning the tire into a slick. <laughs> well, at least it's even. At any rate, well, let's put that off to the side. And we can do another one here. This time we'll be a little more careful. So that looks decent, but not as bald as the other one. But again, there it is. So a little soap and water will clean that up. And the Firestone Supremes are actually pretty much the same. There's a knob on the inside, a little bit of flash on the back ring here. But uh, again, you can easily just put these on the spinner. Sure, it's going to rotate okay. Yep. There it is. For a road used look. So very easy to do. You just need to get yourself a 7 16 socket end here for your chuck of your drill. What about the white walls? I'm going to paint some of those on there. How do we do that? Hmm? Okay, Danny, so you want to paint some white walls on these tires. Well, what I suggest is using the old style tire. This is the Firestone one. And we can just slip it on our end here. Now this time around I've switched out our paintbrush for a wider one, as you can see here. So just push this on the uh, spinner. And make sure everything lines up with the tire. Okay, so what I'm going to do is turn the drill up this way. And I've got it set going in reverse. That's because we want the direction of the tire to match our direction that we're going to hold the brush with. So, I'm going to... I want to go this way so that the bristles, the wheels turning and uh, paint's going to be coming off the bristles. So let's just lay this down for a sec. Now, 
this time around we're going to use a little bit of water with our paint so we can just dip our brush in here tap it into our water and mix a little bit here you want it to be a little not quite running water kind of thinness but a little bit in between thick and whatnot uh, oh before we begin though you're going to need a bottle of isopropyl rubbing alcohol. This is for cleaning up a little later. I'll show you how that's done. Oh, and a little bit of toilet paper. So where the letters are, um, you're not going to be able to spin this too well. So you just want to paint a little bit of white in between the letters. Just kind of jab it in there. Now there is a little ridge around the tire, if you recall, because that's where we took our hobby knife and just cleaned it up a bit. So there, we want to get the Firestone lettering in. And then across from that is a little button thingy. So you want to put some white paint in there. I don't know if I got my consistency quite right on the paint. Okay, now this might be, I don't know if I'm, how well I'm going to do this tire, because I can't see quite well, but what I'm going to do is put a finger here against the tire and slowly squeeze the trigger down so you can regulate the speed of rotation. And we're going to start, start from the center here. Oh. <laughs> okay, watch out for that kind of thing. Let's see, oh, I'm getting it right into the tread. All right, it's very hard for me to do this, but this is the concept. I don't know what the result's gonna be. Okay, so I'm jabbing the brush as close as I can into the end of my socket here. Now keep in mind this, if you're young, this is your dad's socket. <laughs> so he may not appreciate it being filled with paint, but that's what the alcohol is for. So you want to uh, introduce the brush to the tire and then slowly push down on it and you want the edge of that brush to hit that ring so that you can, um, th that's where your paint's going to stop. So we're bringing the butt of the brush in. there. Now, like I say, I'm a little too far away, away from the uh, actual wheel to be able to see where that ring is, so I'll perfect this a little bit off camera. But yeah, there's your general idea. Oh, and try not to bring the finger on that wheel. But anyway, so you can sort of see where we're getting it. Now you want this to dry for about 10 minutes and then pretending this is dry <laughs> you want to walk the tire off very carefully because you're going to need a bit of force and you don't want it to fly across the room so there we go so I guess it's not too bad considering I couldn't see what I was doing but as you can see I kind of skid it off here so you want to be careful but anyway when your tire is done, it should look like that. You can see the nice white wall on there. And of course, once it's like that, we can put our wheel in the hole. Now, in case you're wondering how to clean up the end of this socket here, just uh, grab that isopropyl rubbing alcohol and open up the cap. Now remember, of course, if you're a kid, use parent supervision, but basically, you get a little bit on your piece of toilet paper here and then you should just be able to rub it all off and of course that will also go for our tire here now I did get it down deep in there so you can grab a q-tip and clean it out with a q-tip 
but basically there it is nice and clean okay so i've got a bit of a messy white wall as you saw and now in order to clean it i got the q-tips out and i got the isopropyl rubbing alcohol whoops so if you are young <laughs> You might need parental supervision, but I'm going to take the cap here. Just pour a little bit of the stuff in. Got a little off camera there. Putting that to the side. Now I'm going to put my Q-tip in the rubbing alcohol. And just sort of shape it a little bit. And what you can do is take this. And the alcohol should take out the white paint from where we had the mistake. And be careful not to uh, wipe off your white wall like I seem to be doing here. <laughs> Boy, some fun tonight. Okay. Just take your time and be careful as you can. It's looking better already. This part up here might be tricky. So let's just shape this again. Just on the edge of my finger. And we'll go like this. I think that's working. Okay. Actually, I don't know if it's working. Alright, so there we go. Uh, a little bit better. Now you can also use the uh, rubbing alcohol, of course, to clean up the end of the socket here. Oops. I'm sure your parents will like that after you get it all full of paint. So anyway, as you can see, that is cleaning it up. Now this, of course, is my socket, so I'm not really going to care too much about that. But anyway, once your white wall is dry, you can carefully push your wheel into it. And there I got a Baby Moon hubcap and I painted the... Well, it's a steel wheel with a Baby Moon hubcap inside. Which, of course, I painted the Baby Moon hubcap with some Tamiya clear yellow. And then here's like our model car. Oops, let's put it where we can see this thing. It's like a 36 Chevy body. That's all I have of the model. But anyway, you can see the difference that that white wall makes underneath there. Now here's a group of our tires after applying white paint in various different ways. So what we have here, of course, starting off, was our Goodyear white letters that we put on very carefully with a very thin brush. Here we have the same tire with using the wider brush and going right over. So now you've got a basically a fatter white wall than uh, the factory stock wheel. Then, of course, uh, the Firestone wheel, which I showed you, or the tire. And uh, remember, you're painting to that ridge. Now on these ones there is no ridge, so you can actually go wide with your brush and just let it s the paint sweep onto there. And then here we've got a narrow white wall, and that would be achieved with a very thin brush and a lot of patience. As you're spitting, you just would hold it in one spot, and it would make the thin white wall. And then if you don't want to use white paint, you can actually use like red instead. And in the uh, I think it was around 1965, 66, 67, somewhere in that ballpark. The tire companies experimented with red line tires, blue walls, um, gold on some of them. And some had gold and blue and various other colors. If you know the colors and live back then, write them down in the comments below what kind of uh, stripes were on these things. Now, um, the white letters, they were popular coming into the end of the 60s and all the way up into the 80s and even more. One of the tires I really liked had a thin white wall like this, but then it had the letters T-A 
It was a BF Goodrich Radial TA, and it was just broken up with the TA in there, but the TA was also white, so you had just a little black outline around TA, and then the rest was there. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and that it will help you out on your future upcoming model car builds. Oh, here's Danny. Hi, Danny. What do you want? Do you want me to come there? Okay, what? Oh, you don't want me to tell them about what's coming up next. Why? Oh, you want it to be a surprise. Okay, why are you whispering? Well, you're trying to do the Casey and Finnegan thing. Okay. Well, anyway, Danny, uh, we'll do that. We won't tell them. And next week, we'll have something really cool for you guys. All right, anyway. Are you going to go now, Danny? Okay. Bye-bye, Danny. All right. So, anyway, next week we're going to have something else pretty cool. So, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound that notification bell down there somewhere so that every time I make a new video, you get noticed about it. Because I think a lot of these videos are kind of going by the wayside because, well, people don't just click that notification button and then the next week comes along and they miss the video. So, anyway... Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And from me and Danny the dog, we will see you next week. Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address, www.monster-hobbies.ca. Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, because, well, YouTube is... it. We are monetized. YouTube does pay us, but it's sort of up and down based on views. If you'd like to support us with something a little more steady, visit our Patreon account, like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. It's uh, pretty easy. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.